in the cafe in Beirut. The deep divisions among Syrians are evident. There's little agreement on the causes of the revolution, the future of the Syrian government, and the goals of the opposition. Welcome back. I want to move on with the discussion about the future of Syria. First, um, what kind of future do you envision for the country? Let's assume your revolution succeeds. Are we going to have the Muslim Brotherhood ruling Syria? No, I think this revolution is, was initiated by the people of Syria, by the young, by educated, and the purpose Under of the revolution the is to have Saudi money. Thank you. We said no. I, 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 what do you mean, Heidi? Say what you want. Yes, I say what you want. The council of three countries we don't do is no entirely invented by the, by the Turkish government. Not. And the uh, question about According the position of this, council, uh, of this council about the Syrian the National Council. Syria, yes, it should be addressed to the. Uh, Turkish foreign minister, not to every member of this council, because they don't have a decision. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. Uh, let's let's go back to the uh, let's, let's go back to the root of this revolution. This revolution was started by the people, by the young, educated and you people. And you exploited the demandings who, of the people. And no one exploited make, the demands. To, to make this the SNC council, and all the opposition outside, by, uh, by very and all the people to. outside, are there to convey the voice of people. And the existence of SNC was due to the demands of the people that we want people outside to represent us. Because obviously in Syria, no media is allowed in, and you cannot actually. Let him finish. Let him finish. Please, please, Allah. This is on fact. Please, let him finish. This is not an issue of an opinion. Actually, if you, if you, if you, if you, on fact, if you want to. On fact. If you, if you want to allow the media to get in there and control where they go, this is not this huh? is not the form of media we want to get. Well, I mean, but also, you know, know we, the we media should be facts. there and they should move freely, and that's. That's the, that's the legitimate way of having the media in the country. Can I, but let me go I back to the point about the revolution can rollout. Can, we, sorry, can, can we try no, can to I move respond? on with the future of Syria? Yes, yes, but Lerwa, I'm sorry. What kind of future do you see for Syria? Uh, I want a future where there is equal opportunity for everyone, uh, where I have freedom of speech, and then most importantly, an end to corruption. Are you concerned by some people's warning that Syria is on the verge of civil war? Do you think there might be a civil war happening in Syria or no? Yes, I'm very concerned. You are very concerned. Hi. So a civil war is happening in Homs now. But I there think it no can be contained. No, there is no civil war in Homs. There is a direct attack on the Homs. There is a direct attack on the Homs. The government and 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 no, 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 this is not true. And that's what's happening in Homs. That's the truth in Homs. Please, but, I beg you. But are you saying Lula, the only people who are being I, I killed are killed by the security forces? No, I didn't. Are you denying no, the fact that there are mutual kidnappings and killings by both sides? Well, there could be an isolated incident of revenge. I mean, are they isolated incidents? 200 dead bodies on the streets are isolated incidents. I'll tell you what, if you want to keep on talking, whatever is happening, your regime is to be blamed. Your regime is to be blamed. If they cannot, if you cannot, if you can't. We're trying to hear from Fadi. What's happening in Homs? In my view, Homs started with a very peaceful uh, uprising. However, it was pushed to becoming more violent. And because it's a fault line... Pushed by it, Homs, yeah. Regardless, I really don't know. But I think the regime has a hand in it as well. As, as, as well as extremist views yes, in the too. opposition. Maybe. As well as external uh, uh, sensational media coverage, maybe even... So what happened? What's the situation like now? So the situation in Homs that there are neighborhoods, troubled neighborhoods, that are witnessing uprisings uh, every day, every single day. And there are shooting happening in that. And in, on the other hand, there are also some kidnapping taking place. Between uh, who? Between gr groups and uh, neighborhoods in Homs who also have... Uh, uh, is it on sectarian basis? Unfortunately, this is, the, the reports are saying that it is uh, on sectarian basis. Ale, what's will happening be, in Homs? I be yes, I want you. Finally? Yes. You know, because... <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. I want your view on what's well, happening. Let me tell you something. I think what Lulua said is very important when she said she went out on protest and now she's not protesting, though she's still against the government and she wants to see a bright future for Syria, which she just described. And I think what Lulua said makes the argument of the whole formation of we have to have a council abroad makes it, let's say, futile, to use a diplomatic term, because I'll tell you why. 
Because like, people inside Syria have broken the fear barrier, as Moaz is saying, which I sincerely hope they have done, and a country with fear will, not, will never succeed in achieving goals, if they have broken this barrier, so why don't we talk to opposition from the inside? Well, haven't can we, I, can haven't I finish? We, haven't I also I said haven't, we tried, to haven't yes, we tried to run yes, a conference exactly. from Damascus for the opposition in the Kabul, and, uh, and and what happened? No, a the massacre something? happened. No, no, a massacre. A massacre. Yeah. Yeah. How many people yeah. died yeah. in Hamas? No, no, no. 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 Rula, you asked me. Let me finish. Okay. Oh Let me God. tell you what kind of future I want for Syria. I told you a personal thing a few a few minutes ago. A cousin of mine was killed and decapitated Fine. for sectarian reasons. I refuse this. It's not wrong, and I don't think the people who did it are aware of what they're doing. But the point I'm trying to make here, I don't want a country where they, where its history starts, where, where the new era starts with a massacre like the one in Jisr al-Shughur, where 120 yeah. security forces what members were killed. prior to that? How many people were so killed prior to that none, in Idlib? So no, I do not so justify, one I do no one not knows justify how killing or violence no, 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 whatsoever. No, 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 Armed attacks of the opposition resort. No, we know. Of course not. No, we know. We have phone calls from them saying. Violence, but the regime was pushing for that. And Assad, in his sign? first speech, he said, either me or the chaos. Well, we live in chaos. That. He, he, he never said that. That's what he said. He never said that. No, 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 no. He never said that. 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 Okay, this so I dance my own ears. Well, I, I, I dance my own ears. It's your loud voice. Emma, it's your loud voice. You can't dance. It's basically fine. you hear your own voice, and this is why you can't. It's a loud voice. Emma, you basically can't hear your own voice. Do you believe the protest movement as it is now is capable of toppling the Syrian regime? Well, Okay, that's a very critical issue. What happened to the future of Syria? To the question of We will, we will, but we will. No, I'm just wondering because we went on the future of Syria and then we stopped. People have all the time on satellite channels to speak, and you might as well give us some time. You want to answer at my place? You had a few minutes ago. I want to go back to the question. We will come back. I will come back. I will come back. But she mentioned something. I will come back. How do you think this regime will be toppled? I do believe in peaceful or civil revolution. It started off civil. Now we're Calling, by the way, the, the and I agree. Let me let me finish, please. Let me, fi let me Are finish. Are you for foreign intervention? Military intervention? Yes. No, I, I'm, I'm against the military Your intervention. Are. They're not my leaders, first of all. The you council the said, let me finish, you. let me finish. The, the council I'm, I'm itself, in its sorry. statement, said that they're against any military intervention, no. and that's why people but were. But Burhan Ghalyun, the head of the Syrian National Council, yeah. said, said that. Now, yeah. the foreign intervention, even military one, could become inevitable. Not intervention, protection. There is a difference. When, <laughs> when no Ghalyun, let me finish. Let me finish. No, no, no. I mean, I'm please. not going when to let you finish. When Ghalyun was in Libya, Libya. when Ghalyun was in Libya, in Libya. you're wrong, and, and, Libya. Libya. And, perfect. 50,000 people died in Libya. Can I, can I talk? Yes. Can I talk? Is, can I talk? And the military council there offered the military assistance, and he said no. He said no. Do you want foreign intervention? Why not? No. Why? Who is our role model then? Emma, Emma, Emma. 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 Emma.
وقد أعذر من أنذر. What does that mean? Which means we have we are giving you a warning. We have warned you that you're going to strike. So he These evidence? are practices. Listen. What do you mean? Let me explain to you. If he doesn't comply with the strike, what happens? I'm, I'm telling you. What the? What the? I'm telling you. Let us in. Let us in. Let us see by our own eyes. Exactly. Let us in. 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 Exactly. Let us I mean, the, the government has got the militia and the army all well, used against the... It's, it's, it's not tribe. What about... What about... Shabiha? What do you call Shabiha? No Shabiha. It's a myth. It's, a it's myth. not a myth. It's a myth. It's a myth. What is Shabiha? What is Shabiha? Shabiha is paid for... Paid mercenary. I hold them with my own eyes. I'll tell you something. Emma. Emma. Yes. He is explaining what is Shabiha. Hold on. Let's make it as a discussion. Paid mercenary. They say paid daily. They get paid daily to sort... Why is he the narrative of this session? Because every time he speaks, you interrupt him. No, I want to hear from you. Okay, can I say talk about Shabiha? Maybe he can define Shabiha. What Shabiha? Tell me what Shabiha is. Shabiha, the the people I've seen who are defined by many people as Shabiha, are either thugs, if you like, paid by some groups to hold sticks and go into the 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 gatherings and. Uh, they disperse the them, they and they they, they live everywhere. You never I've saw and I've and seen them on the, the other group of the, the other group is actually people who are believing in what they're doing and going into. We should wear clothes. No, they don't. They don't. They, don't. they, don't. they never did. What they never are you did. saying? You saw Shabiha? I mean, yes. What are they? They're they are plain clothes. They are not wearing any government clothing. They must. They have guns. They have knives. They have sticks. And they're walking around outside mosques, outside funerals, um, and they're basically they're waiting for people to protest so that they hit them. How come? How come? Okay, in, 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 we need to have one conversation at a time. I'll give you a TV show, but now I'll, 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 I'll you know, I'll take we need to have I want to talk about. Okay, I want to talk about Shabiha. I we need if one I may, conversation at a time, me. otherwise your voices won't be heard. I want to ask Haider. You say you never saw Shabiha? I have not been to the. I've seen security forces. Yeah, that's it. But I haven't seen those people who are saying Shabiha. Rula, having the heat here. Okay. We need to go back and tell them about Shabiha. Let me tell you about Shabiha. Strange. During the Syrian crisis, they come, they sleep, they kill, and they are ruthless. During the Syrian crisis, they come, they sleep, they kill, and they are ruthless. During the Syrian crisis, they come, they sleep, they kill, and they are ruthless. I want to ask you something. You say the majority. I want to ask Haidar, you something. Where are we need to have I, one conversation at a time. You were asking me, they were talking, okay. and then all of a sudden you want to, to come on. back. And I want to move no, on to one I topic. Want, I want to explain something, and I think it's important to keep in mind. During the Syrian crisis, there was uh, unrest in revolution. London. Okay, you call it... We call it revolution. Okay. Exactly. Okay. exactly. During the Syrian crisis, during the Syrian crisis, there was unrest in London. During that unrest, there were plain clothes policemen, okay, who were actually making arrests, but who were actually making arrests, and nobody called them. But what they are you know, saying whatever. is that these people are they above the law. They you know, know. Or this is, is about the law. I can say, I can say whatever I want to say. I can say whatever I want. In Syria, how do you know? You're not in Syria. How do you know? I lived in I have a question for Lilwa because she lives in Damascus. How come people in Damascus and Aleppo have been relatively quiet? It's been relatively quiet. There aren't major demonstrations and protests in Damascus and Aleppo. Why? I think the majority is silent because... Because they don't trust the opposition. Well, they're they're undecided either, and there's fear. There's a lot of fear. There's a lot of tension, and um, even in, for the opposition, there's no united voice. You know, at the same time. And so they even on there's what America is to them. and a lot of the businessmen them? in Damascus well, and Aleppo have ties talk. to this government. Media. Have, well, have benefited. Media. And she needs activism. she needs to make her voice heard. A lot, uh, many of uh, Damas uh, of the businessmen in Damascus and Aleppo have benefited from this government and have ties to it. So, 
I think basically money matters more to them. Mu'adh, you say the majority of Syrians support the revolution. How come we are not seeing major demonstrations in Aleppo and Damascus? How much? How come, unlike Egypt, we don't have a Tahrir Square, we don't have these masses staging a city? And Why on the contrary, not? we see supportive rallies inside Damascus. But yeah. let me, I, 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 need to, I need to hear his answer. Well, I mean, well, the moment we, I mean, look at well, it. Uh, if we the, go back to what the, what we, need, what the, we need to hear Mu'adh's answer. I mean, you're only not hearing yeah. to, I mean, you're not hearing me. No. I mean, in Homs, when, when, when people in Homs, with the people in so-called, so-called national I need to hear what he says. People in Homs went to the square and they were basically faced by continuous shooting, live shooting at the gathering. And then the demonstrations in Homs took a different different way where every district did smaller demonstrations. Why is this not in Hama, in Hama and the Aleppo? same. Well, in, in, in Damascus and Aleppo, the security force, uh, security situation is, is tougher. And there is, as you said, there is... Security, the, uh, security, the, security, the security they have in, forces they have in, Syria. in Damascus are not more than Cairo. Syria, the security They're, forces in Damascus are not more than Cairo. How, how, how many, how listen, many is there? Listen, I'm answering the, him. You do not... If you, you if you, do not if, he, I think people, he can speak for himself, mashallah, and, and he's given this floor, by the way. Which I, it's not surprising for Al Jazeera. You know, that is giving, that you're giving Rula, I'm really dismayed at this point, because every beginning of every point. Because you, you keep turn, on interrupting no, him. No, I need to I hear his keep, answer. I don't to keep the interrupting end. him. You keep asking him. And this because is why every I keep time he him. starts answering, I will interrupt keep him. interrupting him. I want to hear what you, you have to say. Why, why, are there, why isn't there a Tahrir Square in Damascus? Well, I mean, the situation in, 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 the, in Egypt, the level of democracy they had was like that much higher than the level of democracy or the level of freedom. There is no freedom well, in Syria Egypt at all. Well, th that Egypt, the Egypt Our before revolution, the, evil, the Egypt before the revolution Egypt. had media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They didn't have... He's protecting civilians, actually shooting at civilians. No, 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 so I think the situation in Egypt is completely different. Egypt, so you don't have to know. But how come, Go ahead. Fed, you have an answer? I disagree that uh, people in Aleppo and Damascus first, that they weren't demonstrating, there were demonstrations in both you cities, not, not as large as in other Why cities. Not? Uh, first, I disagree that they uh, also were not, there are no demonstrations because of fear. Uh, or because they have a lot to lose more than anybody else in Syria. Uh, the, the security situation in Damascus and Aleppo is that's probably the same as anywhere else in, this, in the country. The reality is that these, these uh, population, the majority of these population, hasn't, haven't been convinced. Maybe they sympathize with the revolution, maybe they don't like the regime, maybe the majority there, but they haven't been convinced by many uh, parts of the opposition that an alternative is viable. So they haven't joined that, uh, and, I, and I blame, uh, again, many on, in the opposition for scaring people away towards the regime. But at the same how time, did they, how did they scare away, people away from the regime? They, they invited, they in many cases, invited and uh, scared people in military intervention, calling for no-fly zones, calling for economic sanctions, zones. for buffer zones, for uh, dealing with the devil, if you like, in terms of, to, to, to get uh, the did, regime out. Why does that scare people? Why does it push them towards the regime? Because I think the majority of the Syrian people do not view this as a good versus bad. It's bad versus worse. So for them, yeah. It's the devil we know that rather than the devil we don't know. You spoke about the economic sanctions. Do you think these economic sanctions are going to be effective in pressuring the regime? And are people in Syria already feeling these economic sanctions? I think uh, whoever pushed for economic sanctions uh, was, uh, it, it's a criminal thing. And uh, the, the Syrians in the opposition who are pushing for economic sanctions are actually being criminally stupid in many ways because Why? it's it's pushing this it's pushing many of the people who are undecided towards the regime. Why? It's all because it's getting the people the example of Iraq. It's targeting the people in their daily uh, Living. livings. Uh, it's basically trying to strangle the victim to save it from its uh, to save her from really its uh, killer. Haider, do you think people are already feeling the economic pressure? Of course. How? They are because the the rate of unemployment in Syria is rising. And this is because of the uh, the sanctions which are put on Syria. I just I, I wonder why why, you, why there aren't any sanctions put on Yemen or on Bahrain regimes. 
Can you take this in your annexed explanation? Can you compare it? In Yemen, in Yemen, the Arab League is gathering for us. Yemen, the bombarding cities. We are all Arabs and we are all Syrian One conversation, one conversation time. How are the economic sanctions affecting people's daily lives? Prices have risen. Obviously, the imports, the sanctions of businesses are dead. I mean, there's no work. Fuel. Subsidized. Subsidized. Ala, how did it affect you? How did it affect me? Yes. Well, greatly. Uh, I used to have uh, work coming from abroad. Now I don't. I have no work coming from abroad. Uh, I wanted to start my own production uh, company. Now I can't because it's too expensive to buy the equipment. It's too expensive to buy a camera. I need to get a high-tech computer for editing. Now I can't because they have sanctions against us. And everything. Uh, I look at everything. And I, I the, will say the this. the price has gone up? Can I say yes. something? Aside from everything, whether you're supportive or you're uh, with the government, anti-government, this is irrelevant. I'm speaking about the daily lives of people. We're feeling the pressure. We're feeling the pressure. And while I try to communicate and understand the, the, the argument that some people make that this uh, act will undermine the government, but I find it very hard to believe that Undermining a government is, is worth making your own people go hungry. Uh, I'm sorry. Are but let me ask I mean, you, are people are starting to feel the shortages of fuel? Yes. Are there power yes. outages? Tell me more about it. I mean, uh, there started to be... Uh, I, I live alone, so... I mean, I feel it because I have to pay yes. bills. I have, you know... So what do you feel? So of a sudden, uh, what's muzzled in English? Diesel fuel. <laughs> diesel fuel. Diesel fuel. <laughs> okay. uh, the price has gone up. It's of diesel fuel? No, they're, they're diesel fuel is subsidized. Have, it's you are from the Syrian National Council. You wanted the Arab League and you wanted the international community to impose these economic sanctions. Do you still think they are effective and they will work? They are effective because basically, basically this is what's happened in Syria now. Uh, the people went to demonstrate, asking for freedom and democracy and, no, and, and but equal let's opportunity. Talk about economic sanctions. Uh, and are they, they were going forced. To work? Uh, and, yeah, they will work because what we what we have. Yes. What, actually, every time I talk, it seems to be no, talking sir, about your right to speak. Every time it goes like this and I'm like that. Like that. Just, just a little they will allow you to speak. part of the table. Every I mean, time I try and speak, it's a problem. problem. Every time I'm problem always you interrupting to speak. because you're always avoiding me. Rola, let's... Actually, you're trying I'd like to, to prevent him from speaking. No, you don't no, want no, you, the... You're trying to prevent no. me from speaking. You, every time he speaks, you no, interrupt him. You have it's actually, a way of... You have actually okay. managed to always... I need to hear uh, what he has to say. Do you think the economic you know, sanctions will bring results? Yes, they will bring results. And that's one step towards weakening the government. And we want... They are not provoking... Don't interrupt him. They're not provoking the people... In, 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 in anything but in a positive way. And but this is the demands of the people in the streets actually to for the international community the to intervene, are demanding to protect, sanctions on their country. to protect. The people in Gaza Strip first. The people are demanding. Let's, let's not talk about others here. Let's not talk about others here. Let's not talk about others here. There is a responsibility. There is a. What do you think? We have to. We have to understand. Just, just let me just, just, let me just, just one point to make. I want to say something. You live in Saudi Arabia. You haven't been in Syria since 1977. Does it, when they speak about the suffering of the people due to the economic sanctions, does it surprise you? Well, I, I, live, I, I live outside, I live abroad. And actually, the reason I am an activist, because I want to convey the voice of the people to the outside, uh, outside world. This has been initiated from inside of Syria. And actually, the people inside Syria and the people inside Syria have been. I have Of course, these are turbulent times. Of course, these are difficult times. And the people in Syria decided they want to pay the highest price for freedom and democracy. I have. Okay. Rula, you. We will ask each one of you a last question, and it's going to be the same question. And I will start with Haider. Your gut feeling, where is the country yeah, going? No, no, no. It's going to the better. Yes. The only way out for Syria now is by gradual reform. Gradual reform. We have Do you to think work this together. will happen? Yes, it will. But we will hold a national dialogue. All the opposers, especially the council, I don't think it will accept, should come to this gathering. We have to talk and we have to put the principles of the new Syria, a new constitution, parliament elections, 
Pre presidential election and that's it. Why are you leaving Muddha? Emma, yeah. where do you think the country is going? How do you see this ending? Well, no regime should stay in power for 40 years, especially a repressive regime. Do you think this, the regime of President Bashar yeah. Assad will end? Yes, when? I'm very positive. When do you think? We'll make it. It doesn't matter. Even if it takes years, we're very determined. We know what we want. We finally woke up from our uh, repression and all that. Life is what you make it. And I believe we can make it and we'll not stop. We'll not stop. Even if we're going to give everything uh, we have, we're giving our lives, we're giving everything for a better Syria to build our country, to build the dream that we always had, you know, which has finally happened. What is your dream? My dream was was when I was in Syria to see my country like you know developed countries not only in terms of having freedom of speech not only of seeing justice but also to see democracy and see people you know around me uh, what you want me to finish or <laughs> go Ale, ahead. how do you see this ending you know it's very interesting for me one thing uh, to hear uh, Emma speaking and uh, Maaz speaking they both don't live in Syria. She was just saying before that she lost her, um, she left her luggage in Paris. And for someone who lives in Paris and speaks about the suffering of Syrian people, it sounds let's, a bit ridiculous and hilarious. We don't have much but, time for you know, this now. Okay. I want to how know do I how see do you this see this ending? ending? You know something? I see this ending very well. Uh, next year, we will have parliamentary elections. 2014, we will have a referendum. And That's perhaps we have presidential is. elections. You think the and regime the will people, survive this crisis? Yes, I think the regime will. But you know what I think? I think the Syrian regime, you say, you say the word regime, I don't believe in the word the regime. The Syrian government, think, will the Syrian government survive this no, crisis? No, it won't, but the president will survive it, because I think the president is years. building... Yes, yes, yes. You know something? We support Emma, him, and we, we want need to him. Hear from him. And as long as the people want him, he will stay Allah, for This is a years. question that I have. Okay. Who supports the president? These people who come out in masses and demonstrate for the government, who are they? I think they are the people like me. I come from a family, my father was a peasant. But the, with this regime that you call it, if it's a bad regime, it allowed him an education, education for the children, a job, a fair treatment, and a fair opportunity. And this is why I think I owe it to, to my father, I owe it to my family, I owe it to this regime that get, has given us a fair chance of there being peasants for years and years on end, after coming from rural areas to become active members in society. It allowed me the good ed education to be with you today and speak good English. It's funny. This no, is why I would support it. started no, no. from the villages. Okay. Yes. And, 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 and now Gosh. the villages are taking no, no. it down. No, no. You know? I want to ask you, how do you Many see this ending? Are with the government. No, Ala. How do you see this ending? Um, yeah. Hopefully, we, it will become a democratic country either way. Um, do you see any bad scenarios? Yes, I see a lot of bad scenarios. What's the, ba the, the worst um, scenario you're seeing? Civil war is what I'm really scared of. I hope it doesn't happen. I think we need to unite as a people, whether, regardless of our differences, and be able to accept each other and embrace, <laughs> each, other. embrace each other and still love each other. And, you know, Which is and, easier for some people than others. And yeah. to be able, it's, it's hard. I find Syrians, we're just learning to talk, to discuss, you know? Fadi, how is this ending? Well, it's clear that the society is split, it's polarized, and uh, the Syrian people unfortunately are caught in between uh, a regime that wants to stay in power even if it destroys the country, and unfortunately powers outside uh, and some of the opposition who wants to destroy the country to, to bring down the regime. So this is why the people are not supporting this en en masse. However, I think the people should keep their eyes on the end goal, which isn't bringing down the regime. It's actually, that's a step towards a something. Country. A better country, a civil, uh, society, a, a civil state, a democratic uh, uh, state, uh, people where uh, freedom can, uh, can exist in, in a country like Syria. How optimistic are you that this scenario will prevail? I think if uh, no international or external intervention happens, I trust that the Syrian people will be able to do it on their own. Unfortunately, many in the opposition, like the SNC, do not have enough trust in the Syrian people and have, a, have uh, the time pressure f that they have to end this now, even if they have to deal with the devil. And I think this is a lack of trust in the abilities of the Syrian people to bring about this change on their own. What's your concern, if we're going to interrupt this, what's your concern from this foreign intervention of trying to put more pressure? Why do you think it affects or undermines the end goal? Because the Syrian peoples want a democratic state, a civil state. However, whoever is intervening, like we've seen in all other scenarios in the, in the Middle East, do not have the same national interests as the Syrian people or the Libyan people or the Iraqi people. They have their own geopolitical 
political interest. Well, what if they help the people? Like not necessarily. It, not necessarily. These Who interests they will. Them in Libya? Uh, Who not said yet. The bombardment from NATO. Anyway, uh, no? they, they, it, it, mm -hmm. it's not necessarily aligned with the interest of the Syrian people or the Iraqi people, if the, for that matter, or the Libyan people. What is your major concern? What's your uh, biggest fear? Uh, that uh, there could be, uh, because of international or external intervention, there could be uh, uh, civil wars or civil strife or people or even, uh, unfortunately, could be even worse, a split in a country. And that's the worst case scenario. And I think the best case scenario is a transitional period where the, the government or the regime accepts, the accepts to take, accepts to negotiate for its uh, exit strategy rather than destroying the country to bring down the regime. Mr. Maso, I won't interrupt him. Something about government supporters. You know, you, you said, why do I support the government? I have to tell you something. I support the president, but I don't support corruption. And I think the president should do its best to end corruption in, in our country. Why, did, why don't Can you I get him responsible for the corruption? Why? 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 Because, why? because why? Not, not forever. But I, I, I want to go back to this. You said it's one point. I wanted to say this. I wanted to say this. And we want a civil and a democratic. And we want a civil. Let him let finish him. his sentence. And, and someone, and we want a civil and a democratic state. And in this civil and democratic state, which we will reach peacefully if the president is not elected, so be it. But we will not accept it as Syrians that someone from abroad would come and say you have to change your president. It will never happen. It will never happen. You are confident the president I'm will survive the crisis? I'm 100% confident because he has the support of the people. And we are the people. Mu'az? That you are the last. Emma, it's Mu'az's turn. It I want to hear from you. Like How do you see this ending? Yeah, this is kind of. We need to hear Mu'az, please. <laughs> this is. This is actually, actually, this is where we have the people of Syria taking the, their future into their their own hands. And Don't you think we are the people of Syria Allah, also? He needs to tell us how he sees it ending. He said the well, people I'm of Syria. I, 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 I want to hear I'm how he sees it ending. He's speaking for the people Allah. of Syria. I, I, Allah. I want to hear his view. Please let me know what's your view. How do you see this ending? Uh, this, basically, this is uh, this is a, there's no go back on this. The revolution will end by the regime ending. And the regime ending, as, as Fadi said, is one step. Uh, towards the future, the, Syria, the future of Syria, where we want a pluralist state, we want a democratic, secure, and peaceful state. You this are is, confident that this revolution will succeed in bringing down the regime? I'm very confident because never in the history a regime or any force has been able to succeed in crushing the people. A Bahrain uh, regime could succeeded in crushing the regime. Uh, What's supported? your plan of action? How do you bring? How will you bring? How will you topple this regime? How will well, you bring the first down? priority. Uh, the first priority, of, uh, of course, is to get rid of the regime. And we are saying the Syrian people are the ones who are going to bring down the regime. But we need to seek protection for the Syrian people because the regime is turning the guns against it. And that would be done all, all according to the, uh, according to the uh, you know, responsibility to protect. If the government cannot do it, then the international community had to intervene. Humanitarian corridors, buffer zones, anything to protect the people. Are these realistic plans? And they're, uh, first, they're not realistic. Second, they're not supported by the Syrian people. And I think the majority exactly. of the Syrian people do not again, agree with again, this. Again, when this we is, say the Syrian okay, people, I need to hear we, uh, what well, the, well, it suits thank you well, for well, coming back to the table. It doesn't suit you, it's not Ale, the Syrian people, Thank obviously. you for coming back to the table. In your, with, yani, honestly, Let's how do you see this table, ending? Uh -huh. How do you see this crisis ending? Okay. Honestly. First of all, allow me to say that I left the table because I thought, with all due respect, that time was not being distributed in a fair manner. Okay? This is number one. The crisis can only end... We appreciate that you came back. Okay. The, the crisis can we were supporters, we're democratic, we like to engage in dialogue. The crisis can only end if we can actually, if the, cons if the constituents, the way, if the same. constituents of, I'm proud please of don't no, we need to direct hear. any you see, you insults, see? sir. No, no, no. Yes, okay? Yes. And I'm proud of it. I'm proud to be like It's president. enough no, that you've had cannot, enough cannot, No, 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 sir. No, no, no. No, listen. 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 Listen to me. This is not allowed. Basically, Rula is not telling you right now not to interrupt me. I hear. I need to hear how he sees it. I want if we want, if we want really for this country to move forward, okay, then the major constituents from the opposition and the government, the major political trends, opinions, ideas, uh, will have to sit down and talk okay, about a transition towards a pluralistic, multi-party system in which the freedom of expression 
for all members of society is guaranteed by law, in which there is accountability, in which, in which what you know Rula was was saying, uh, Lulua. Lulua was saying <laughs> about the fact that we need uh, uh, to fight corruption. These are all goals that we all I think agree on. These do not come on the back of tanks. The United States and France historically have not been pro-Arab causes, and therefore but being being. Uh, having a Machiavellian approach in, uh, is not exactly the best okay. revolutionary but approach. With considering all the elements involved in this crisis, mm -hmm. how do you see it ending? What will happen? Well, if if this pace continues, yes. then nothing will happen. We what will be everyone saying? will be where they are right now. You think the president will be the president and the protest will continue? Absolutely, at this pace. For how long? How long? For until, he uh, until he finishes his term, and he is going to call for presidential elections in which people, anyone, can run for those elections. I will elect okay. him. Why, would, why wouldn't he be brave Thank you enough. all. I'm sorry, but he we have is to end this here. Than, why wouldn't he be we brave will enough have to call for people who are getting now. paid by Qatar and by Saudi Arabia and by the United States? Can I ask? And he is we an are independent ending. We have to end this discussion here. Thank you country. all for being with us. Well, and you can watch this episode and every other episode of the cafe at Al Jazeera. Thank you all. Thank you all. Well, it's been very t tough actually to sort of uh, convey the point. Uh, every time I tried to talk, there was an interruption, and it seems to be systematic. Anything that I would try and say, the, the other, the other, the other guys would try and uh, try and stop it. I think it showed the, the reality on the ground in Syria. There is a split in society and that was really what showed in, in this debate. Uh, the polarization is very clear at this tense time. Uh, when we look at Syria, what's going on in Syria, and when we look to other countries, like Yemen and Bahrain, we see the same events are taking place here. And the same thing is taking place in Syria. But we don't see the uh, foreign interference, interference in those two countries like, uh, like it is in uh, Syria. And we don't see the media coverage that is, uh, that is given to those two countries, that's given to Syria. Well, the main thing that I didn't get to say is I would like to break the stereotyping of people who are supporting the government as the, the myth they're saying they're, they benefit from the government, they took money. I support the government just because I believe it is the right thing for Syria. And I, I personally support the president because he is the right thing for Syria. I walked out because I felt, again, that, uh, first of all, questions. You know, when you use the word uh, that is so loaded, it's the word revolution. Uh, it's basically, you know, uh, it's something that, that I felt had to be clarified, was not given the chance to clarify. And then the uh, questions were always directed in one side of the table um, and then stopped. I think that, you know, we care about this country. This is the major point. All of us, on whatever side, we love our country and we all want a better Syria, no matter what side you want, you're on. And we should learn to create that, to, to active participation in that, you know.